Hello, welcome to Labor on the Job. I'm the host, Steve Zeltzer. This segment, we're going to be looking at the conditions, struggles, and lives of printing pressmen in Northern California and the, some of the issues that they face. Now, in the midst of this uh, struggle with the Hearst Corporation and the newspaper agency, uh, wasn't there a change in your union affiliation? In 2005, it, uh, we merged with the Teamsters International Union and uh, became a subsidiary of the Teamsters. So when this merger took place, uh, was the, the, these other unions argue that it's, well, you have to merge because it's going to make it better and, and you'll have more strength as a larger force and you can back each other up? Was what, what kind of uh, well, it, it reasoning that they have? Uh, well, that was basically the reasoning that was behind it, uh, was the point that strength you know, you're in numbers. For strength in numbers. Um, unfortunately, that's not how it turned out, at least for us. Well, there was a, a, a national vote, and GCIU, how many members did it have? Or um, does it have? Oh, we had, or? I believe we had about 65,000 members I see. at yeah. the time the ver vote occurred, and it was voted to mer merge with the Teamsters, which was the only union to be dealt with. So it was either merge with the Teamsters or not merge with the Teamsters. And it was probably about a uh, two to one margin to merge with the Teamsters. So in the Teamster drivers uh, at the agency and the Teamster drivers at most newspapers are a pivotal PowerPoint because if you can't deliver the paper then yeah. you have some power. So Correct. And it's harder to replace drivers uh, who know the routes and that kind of thing. So what, what happened after the merger? Well, with uh, us, we merged with the Teamsters, and things appeared to be uh, fine and normal for the first year to year and a half. And then uh, we be began to see a change in the Graphic Communications Conference, which is our previous union is part of. And uh, we began to see our leadership change and it seemed like in the direction that they were headed. And it hasn't always been good for the locals around the country. But, but by change, what do you mean? I mean, what, what did they do that you felt was not proper method of defending the members? Well, one thing that occurred is when we went into negotiations with the Chronicle and Hearst, uh, it began as a normal negotiations. and. Approximately a year and a half ago, the International stepped in and began to direct the, where the negotiations were going and didn't take the, over the negotiations, but they pretty much uh, steered it in the direction they wanted to and steer. And what was that direction? What was that direction? Uh, to give in to the Hearst Corporation to some degree for in an attempt to get labor peace. What, what do you mean by give in? Uh, give the Hearst Corporation certain <coughs> give backs or well, they are change work, the rules. Work condition, you mean work and rules uh, some kind of, of the thing? work rules and work conditions were changed, which uh, seemed to favor the Hearst Corporation. And Bruce, what were some of those things that were changed? Well, I know uh, Romo Lois and Local 853, they, um, broke away from the Conference of Newspaper Unions and they signed a uh, no-strike clause. So once that happened, uh, they what, what, is that, what does that mean, they signed a no-strike clause? It meant if any of the other unions went on strike that they would s deliver the papers. I including you're including now your, your Teamster members? They would cross your yeah. picket lines? Yes. Yeah. Even though you were Teamsters? Correct. Yes. They signed an agreement that they would actually cross the picket line of fellow Teamsters? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Matter of fact, well, there was rumors that yeah. Roma Lois supposedly made a comment that the, the at one of the meetings to put pressure on our local uh, leadership that the company bought them bulletproof vests. Oh, they did. Now, now yeah. Carlos, huh? I, mean, what, I mean, why would a union uh, propose to merge with, with the pressmen? and then sign an agreement saying that, that their members would cross the picket lines of your members who are fellow Teamsters, you pay money to the same union organization. Why did that happen? Um, they got what they wanted, that's what Yeah, happened. basically what it comes <laughs> down to, it seems to me that when somebody some, does something like that, they've cut their own deal, then not thinking about the rest of the 
the union members or the rest of the union locals that, that had to, to negotiate after them. Because I think they were the first ones. And, but and he I'm was aware that, that there were other Teamster members in the, in the plant. Well, yeah, he, he knew at that point. He knew. He absolutely knew. There was no way of getting around it. And I think that's what set up the big conflict when it came to us. What was the effect on your, on, on your negotiation well, as a result of that? It was tremendous well, on it our broke up the conference of newspaper unions. Well, it was just a point that we were forced to take a deal that we, didn't, we couldn't fight it the way we should have been able to fight it. Uh, you know, conditions. Uh, Manning, which is, Decent wages. Uh, you know, they were really after our 100-man our guarantee that we had that kind of kept us in, in a nice, you know, working condition because it was all, they, for, they forcibly had to hire enough people to make sure that, that things were safe. And once that, this happened, it, we were kind of like pinned yeah. between both because they wouldn't give us strike sanctions. They didn't, they, at first they said they would, then they said they, they weren't going to. Mm -hmm. And that kind of leaves us out in the cold because anything that we did after that would be considered either a wildcat strike, right? Or, or you know, anything that we did, we're, we're just basically cornered. We didn't even know. get any support when we had rallies. So, yeah. so you had a rally, the conference of news, uh, the union, GCIU was having a national conference here in, yeah. in San yeah. Francisco. In you had a rally in front of the Chronicle, I think we covered it. And apparently uh, the Teamsters didn't support it and the even the leader of your of your the section in the Teamsters didn't show up at the. Well, the well there were some Teamster yeah, members that were at the that yeah, were there out were some that were there. but there was nobody. But none of the leadership. But, but none, none of the leadership. Yeah, there. none of the big um, that I power know, brokers. No. And what about yeah. the head of the conference of newspaper unions? Uh, well, virtually at that time it was all broken up. Once the Teamsters went off on their own, the, you, you, um, Doug Cutspertson must have gave the. Uh, Teamsters the sanction to break away from the conference because there was supposedly a stipulation at the conference of newspaper unions. Nobody in that conference was to break away from any of the unions until we all had a uh, so there contract. was an agreement, a agreement to stay yeah, unified so, so you couldn't be pitted against each other. But he may have allowed that to happen. Now today at the at the Chronicle and the Hearst Corporation, they're trying to build a new plant, apparently, and contract out your jobs, outsource your jobs to this new yeah. plant. What is the oh, union? Nice. I mean, this would be probably devastating to your union. Well, of course, yeah, it would decimate us uh, in, a, in a great manner. It would take almost a little more, either half or a little more than half of our membership. And, and what is the union na and the national Teamsters doing to fight this outsourcing of the jobs? Nothing at this time. Paul? Uh, to my knowledge, we're, they are aware of the fact that uh, they're trying to build a plant in South Fremont uh, I've been by the location. It's just a vacant lot, probably 75 to maybe 100 acres. It's got a uh, railroad tracks on the back side of it, and it faces Interstate 880 towards the front of that lot. And they just recently opened an, uh, an office in South Fremont to, I don't know what the reason for that is, other than having a local so, uh, presence. So this is this outsourcing and it's happening not just at uh, the Chronicle, it's happened at many plants in, uh, around the country. It's happening yeah. at the United Airlines. They're talking about outsourcing and, and shifting jobs. What should the union be doing about it? Well, part of, part of the problem is, is that the companies are just looking at the bottom line. They're not looking at safety. They're not looking at actual people who actually know the equipment and know what it takes to make sure that it's safe for anybody else that's in there because believe it or not on a lot of places there's more than 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 one local sitting there there's more than you know uh, one amount of people working there they rely on each other to make sure that somebody does the right thing so somebody else don't get hurt so you have else. to have a team you have to have yeah, a collective, like a, team, it's a collective together. team you have highly uh, quick equipment, I mean, quip equipment that needs a lot of skilled, talented people, I guess, to, yeah. to operate. And Correct. It relies, yeah, you rely on everybody just to make sure that everything's done right so nobody gets hurt. Okay, well, we have to wrap it up now, but I want to have you back and continue this discussion okay. so we can learn more about the issues and concerns of Pressman in Northern California. So thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you, Barbara. Thanks, 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 Thank you, Steve. Thank you.